What this demo is going to show is how you can use the combination of direct modeling, meshing, and iterative optimization using Fluence CFD solvers, Optimal Solutions Sculptor and its back to CAD functionality, and Spatial's ASUS Interop and 3D Mesh products to create optimized designs. We're going to optimize a simple elbow joint to match inlet and outlet pressures. Currently, the design does not meet that criteria. Uh, in addition, we want to make some modifications to the design. We're going to start in space claim so that we can use direct modeling. We'll go ahead and load our elbow. Here we can see that the elbow, as it currently stands, has matching inlet and outlet pipes. We want to use the direct modeling found inside space claim to go ahead and shorten our outlet pipe. And we actually will shorten it to two millimeters. And we also want to apply a blend on the inlet. These are the only modifications we want to make at this time. So we'll go ahead and save the file out. In this case, we're going to save it as an IGES file so that we could bring it into a host of applications. At this point, we'll switch over to Spatial's RADF, which is the Rapid Application Development Framework, which ties together ASUS, Interop, the Visualization Framework of Hoops, and also the 3D Mesh product. We'll go ahead and load in our exported IGES file. And you can see here that this is the part that we modified in Space Clean, complete with the blend on the inlet and the shortened outlet. We'll move over to the 3D Mesh plugin, where we're going to generate a tetrahedral volumetric mesh. We'll go ahead and select Tet Mesh, and we'll use the default options and go ahead and click Generate. So now you can see the mesh being displayed on the surface. If we wanted, we could go through and change the settings to produce a different mesh, but in this case, we'll use the default settings. Going back up to the ribbon bar, we can see the Optimize button. By clicking on the Optimize button, Sculptor will launch in an iterative loop, calling Fluence CFD Solver to analyze each step and find the result that best meets our criteria. We'll go ahead and select a definition file and Sculptor goes and launches. As you can see, it's calling Fluent, and it's going to do this for each of its steps. Now, while this is running, I need to point out that we've hard-coded some data behind the scenes to make this work. Since RADF doesn't have a Fluent GUI, we don't have a way to interactively set controls like boundary conditions, equations, and regions. Instead, we've placed all of this into a Fluent case file, which is being read and worked on with each iteration. Sculptor isn't limited just to Fluent. They can work with a long list of solvers, including Abacus, Ansys, Nastran, and many others. Once Sculptor has determined the final optimized shape, they must then take that deformed mesh and use it to change our ACES CAD model. They're going to push the deformed mesh back to CAD, giving us a manufacturable optimized part. Once we've performed the deformation, RADF will output this optimized SAT file then it will remesh the model and it will display both the CAD model and the refined mesh for us. As you can see, this step does take a while. Uh, this is being recorded on a two core laptop and we've chosen to use a fairly simple part to minimize the amount of time that this process takes. Uh, as it is, you can see how many iterations we're running through to find our optimized shape. Much of this functionality could be built into your application uh, using Spatial's components or Sculptor's components. Now available is their ASD SDK, which allows you to use a simple API set to add the Sculptor functionality into your application. In addition, while we're showing the deformation on a CFD mesh and then propagating it back to the CAD model using back to CAD, in real time you can also modify a CAD file directly. Uh, 
And there we have it. So now we've run through the entire iterative process, and what we have is a modified, optimized part. We can still see the blend on the inlet, and we can tell that our outlet is still shorter. But now, Sculptor has made considerable changes on the cross section in the actual elbow. And this was designed to meet our criteria that we coded in to match the inlet and outlet pressures. If we wanted to, we could take this part and go back to space claim. Let's do that. We'll go ahead and bring back in our optimized model. As you can see here, we can see the flares, the blend, the outlet. Again, using the direct modeling, we're going to go ahead and modify the part. So let's extend out the outlet a little bit. If we wanted, we could change the blends. Uh, we could then save the file back out, read it into RADF, and call Sculptor again. In this way, we can go through and make sure that our part will match our design criteria completely, and we can work in an iterative, optimized fashion.